welcome to another great episode of What's the 4 on 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. And I'm Courtney Rashawn. Hello, ladies. Hi, Hi cool. How are you? <laughs> so let's get a quick take on what's popping. And Academy Award winning actor Denzel Washington, we love him, received the Cecil B. DeMille Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes Awards. And actress Taraji P. Henson won a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Drama for Empire. Nice. I am not surprised. Did you see when they tried to make her wrap it up? Yes, and she, she was like, like, oh, no, no, no. no. Wait, 20 years for this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Girl, congratulations. <laughs> yes, congratulations. We love love our cookie lions. So singer Natalie Cole was laid to rest um, at a Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Mm -hmm. Her parents, sister, and brothers are also buried there. So the whole family has a plot, apparently. So that's where she was buried. Uh, Natalie Cole died from idiopathic preliminary arteral hypertension, which led to heart failure. Um, she was diagnosed with the ailment after receiving kidney transplant, kidney transplant back in 2009. Right. So our prayers so go out to Natalie yeah. Cole's family. Yeah, yeah and there's no yeah. cure for that. It's progressive, so it gets worse. Yes. And we bid a fond farewell to singer Nicholas Caldwell, co-founding member of the legendary group The Whispers. Wow. Caldwell passed away of congested heart failure at age 71. Wow, wow that's so sad to hear. Not Walter or Scotty, but we love the whispers. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do love the whispers. Mm -hmm. um, and then rocker David Bowie passed away. That was oh that was God. really surprising. Yes. I was like, what? It was so sudden. And he had just so released hot. an album, and he just turned sixty nine like two days before. I'm like, what? He's dead. It's an album called Black Storm. I think it's a Black yeah. Star or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So sad. So he pioneered glam rock. He died at age sixty nine. He leaves behind former supermodel and Entrepreneur, entrepreneur extraordinaire, mm -hmm. Iman. Yes. Her makeup is so, I know you probably love makeup, yes. right? Love and, makeup. And, and, yes. and two children. We are so saddened by this news. Um, yeah. Our prayers go out to them and the families. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these are quick takes for this week. Keep it right here. We'll be back with more of What's Poppin'. Wow. These are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one and we're bringing you stories that are popping. And Forbes recently released its top 30 under 30 list. And to my happiness, there are a number of black people on the list, yes. including 23-year-old heartthrob John Boyega. Now, Boyega is blazing trails in a new Star Wars, Star Wars film, The Force Awakens, and he is the first black stormtrooper we have ever seen on film in a Star Wars movie. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Boyega... Stormtrooper. <laughs> Sounds nice, eh? Stormtrooper. Oh, Lord. Hey, baby, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm a, a stormtrooper, storm baby. Oh, I'm Lord. bubbling over here. I'm just a cooper. Boyega, who is a Brit British of Nigerian descent, has proudly embraced his African origins. In an interview with the New York Times, he said, and I love this, I am a confident black man, a confident Nigerian black chocolate man. Yes. I'm proud of my heritage, and no one can take that away from me. So, love him. Also on the list are several black women, black girl magic. I yes, love it. Yes, yes. Including 26-year-old Jewel Burks, an entrepreneur within a family of entrepreneurs. She co-founded and is CEO of Part Pick, which, through pictures, helps people find parts they're looking for for their electronics or other machinery. Additionally, 28-year-old. Nyla Ellis Brown is founder of Ellis Island Tropical Tea. Now it's interesting how she started out. She started by selling her old Jamaican family tea recipe out of the trunk of her car. A silent partner eventually invested a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Nice. Duh, I want That's friends nice. like that <laughs> yeah, for a bottling nice. plant in Detroit. And now she's selling her tea to Whole Foods and other stores nationwide. So. Very cool. Caribbean girl magic. Yeah. Yes, very, very cool. 
That's a good thing. Yeah, wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I'm like, yeah. and I'm so happy to see so many like black millennials just doing their thing and just Absolutely. you know yes. making their mark. It they're is making, good. They're making their jobs. It's, it's nothing about. It's not about just going to some establishment. It's creating the opportunities. Getting a right. cubicle and working it out. They're being really, really innovative. Yeah, in yeah, that's that's, that's great. And yes. just paves the world the way is changing. Change definitely changing. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that's a very cool thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Miss Janet Jackson. Miss Jackson, Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> I knew it. I, knew it was coming. I just like that about you. Yes. Remember, remember the little wardrobe debacle? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Janet was good, right? Yes. She was forty something. I was like, she okay. was fifty now. So, but when that happened, oh, no, yeah, she was. Yeah. Wasn't she like 30, 36 or something? Thirty six or something? She might have been. Because remember, I remember the, the joke with um, what's his name, Chris Rock, who was like thirty six year old. Uh, oh, that's the, your man, dream. Remember? Oh. That? Yeah, okay. yeah, remember that. <laughs> Go ahead, what about Miss Jackson? Okay, well, Miss Jackson has canceled some of her tour dates due to illness. Mm -hmm. um, a rumor spread that Janet had throat cancer, which prompted the singer to issue a statement on Twitter to debunk the rumors. So Janet okay. stated, uh, remember, believe it when you hear it from my lips. The rumors are untrue. I do not have cancer. I'm recovering, which is a good thing. Yeah. My doctors have approved my concerts as scheduled in Europe, and as I promised, the postponed shows will be rescheduled. Thank you for your prayers and love. Yeah, so. my, my heart dropped when I heard the rumors. Yeah. People just I that, make I was like, no, us stop. Like, right, so. they just say, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she didn't show up. She's dying. Yeah. <laughs> How well, she has a cold. I noticed she had some uh, some uh, shows um, scheduled at the the Barclay Center that mm -hmm. she had to cancel. Mm -hmm. So you know, I know she performed in Hawaii. So she's actually been doing re really well on the tour. So mm -hmm. this was kind of like all of a sudden, and then it was just like okay, the rumor mill started. Right. Turning, right. Like, mm -hmm. but, but in fact, she was sick, and she did have. Um, you know the I guess the whole you know problem that she had about being sick all that cleared up so she's doing fine is it yeah. true that she's like performing covered up now because of who she's married to and all that stuff is that true I don't, is that know. I haven't, I don't know she was always I think pretty covered when she was performing so you know always kind of like you know military or you know just her stomach showing if I had her abs I'd show my stomach yeah, off too right so but so remember like yeah. that's the way love goes yeah, it was that all was this whole midriff thing remember people yeah, said but she, she got a 22 Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. So I'm not really like a big old Janet fan. I love Janet. I love her. I am. What? I, am. I know that sounds yeah, crazy, right? Girl. <laughs> I don't like, know. Sorry. Black girl magic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I okay. Love Janet. So, People Magazine is reporting that uh, the one, two, well, actually, two of the cases that were brought against Bill, well, were charged against Bill Cosby are not going to be taken on by the dis district attorney's office. Okay. What they found is that they don't have evidence to prove it. So one of the stories, a uh, girl, 18 years old, um, she says that she was at the Playboy Mansion mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and Bill Cosby slipped her something in her drink. Mm -hmm. And then when she woke up, wow. uh, Bill Cosby was biting on her feet. And her breasts, I don't know how he was doing it at the same time, but whatever. So <laughs> the mm. DA said that they, the Los Angeles District Attorney said that they didn't have any evidence and then to she substantiate said that. Was it, she that. was 15 at the time or something? She was like 18 that? at the time. I, I, she, wasn't eight, she wasn't 15. She was okay. 18. But okay. what the hell is she doing in the Playboy Mansion yeah. anyway? And then why are there not charges against Hugh Hefner and the. Exactly. Like, it's just a well, little I bit. Well, I mean, if she was of age, I guess she could have been in it. Well, you know, he cavorts with a lot of but young some, teenagers But if something anyway. happens on the 411 set, yeah. you could sue me, and then you're going to be able to sue the producer. Right. Right? There's right. some level right. of duty that's mm -hmm. that's that's afforded to you right. when you walk but into she didn't my come, establishment. But she didn't even come, she didn't even come forward. I think she's just a hanger on. I don't think she yeah. has anything to do with this. I think she's just a hanger on. That's and, what and, and, and Janice Dickerson, you know, the one from the cele celebrity yes. um, couples therapy. Who she deemed herself as the first supermodel. Yes, Janice what? Dickerson. Yes. She, she, she charged yeah. Bill Cosby, too. <laughs> I heard, I heard. Yeah. I, the first like, yeah. I was like, oh my God. So anyway, they have a, he's suing her for defamation. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. it's, it's, so, it's so crazy. And then what they said was um, Bill Cosby was in New York during the time of the allegation. He wasn't there. He wasn't right. at the Playboy Mansion that whole summer. Right. So, okay. Right. But no matter where you are on the Bill Cosby issue, I'm just going to call it issue, you have to bow down. To Miss Everybody Monique is Presley. talking about her. Everybody's talking about her. I am she looking is. at her like she is so The Annalise Keating, real life she's Annalise just, Keating. I'm not, like, she's kind of like Claire Huxtable's character. Right. Like she's so feisty and on it. So I did like a little research on her. Like mm. so she went to Howard University. She's a minister. When I say I'm I'm looking at this woman. Yeah, and a mother too. Yeah. I'm she looking at her. 
and she is just so eloquent. She's yes. just flawless. And and I'm looking at she's on CNN all the time, right. and they're like coming for mm -hmm. her juggler. And mm -hmm. every time she sh shuts them down, I just have to kind of like kudos to her. I love watching her. Yes. Yeah, I mean she's definitely she a things. great lawyer. She's definitely articulate. He picked the right person. I know he picked the black woman for a reason. Yes, yes no fool now. Yes, yeah, so you know, you know, he's you know, she's definitely definitely got. She's on point. Let me just yes. put it that way. She's on point. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you. Come look at Mr. Feather. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the Porn One. And now Courtney is giving us tips for keeping our smiles nice and white. Yes, yeah. So I have some beauty recommendations for keeping your teeth bright and white yes. all year round. Mm, you know, I need which that. is very, very important. Yes. Well, the first thing is um, a great smile is very important. And it's also important to make sure you have white teeth. Um, here's a few ways to keep your teeth white and bright. Mm -hmm. So baking soda, which you can find soda. <laughs> right in your fridge. We're talking about some drugs, though. We're talking about some drugs. Not just use it on your teeth. Not no drugs. Sorry. Good old-fashioned baking soda. It can be found anywhere um, at any supermarket or local bodega or in your refrigerator. Um, baking soda doesn't contain fluoride. But you can use this along with your regular toothpaste once a day. The baking soda keeps your teeth very white. There's an okay. agent in baking soda that does keep your teeth white, but it doesn't have fluoride. So, you know, you just can't rely on it without toothpaste because you won't receive the fluoride that your teeth need, you know, just for... You How know, much is good? How much should you use? Well, I'd say maybe like a teaspoon, mm -hmm. probably a teaspoon. Um, you know, you just mix it with a little water and let it create a paste. Mm -hmm. And then you go ahead and you brush your teeth. So... Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing is whitening strips, which can be found at, you know, your local drugstore or, you know, Dwayne Reed, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, whitening strips are amazing for keeping your teeth gleaming. And whitening strips are easy to apply and they come with instructions so you won't be, you know, you won't mess that up. Mm -hmm. And they can Strip brighten up your smile. Exactly. <laughs> and they can brighten up your smile in one I'm week. Smile the whole time. Yes, yeah. And they can be found in drugstores <laughs> and supermarkets. Like, they're accessible. They're easy. They're very, very easy really to get. really white teeth. Like, they are blinding me. I'm like, damn, I'm jealous well, now. I did go to the dentist today and I had a cleaning, so it was time. Oh, yeah. Um, so heavy smoking and tobacco can also stain your teeth. Um, brushing regularly after having more than, you know, after having, you know, a um, cigarette or mm -hmm. whatever your choice of smoking is. Um, if you dip in tobacco, what is it? Snuff? Snuff. <laughs> My grandmother used to have snuff down here. Ew, Lord. What Jesus! She's she from Alabama. <laughs> Willie Coochie. Oh, God. I'm going to snuff. <laughs> so funny. Nah. And of course, visiting the dentist regularly. Regular cleanings will also help keep your teeth very, very clean, um, healthy, and white. And this should be done at least once a year. I mean, I I go twice a year, mm -hmm. every six months. But at least try to get to the dentist, you know, once a year. And to don't have be your afraid teeth of it because a lot of people yeah. don't go because they're afraid. No, and it's not painful or anything like that. It's just a cleaning. You get a fluoride treatment. You rinse. They polish, and you're good to go. And as far as cosmetics, teeth whitening using a machine with ultraviolet light and a special gel can brighten your smile in an hour. Um, the results are instant, and this could be done one to two, one, you know, How one much? to two months. Um, it roughly, can, it can vary. It can start anywhere from 75 roughly to about $125. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad yes, at all. That's not bad at all. And speaking of teeth whitening, um, our former guest, Chrissy Monroe, is actually hosting um, a relaunch event um, at Crazy Love Studio in the Bronx on Sherman Avenue um, on January 23rd, which is actually a teeth whitening um, facility, and they oh. do amazing, amazing oh, work. Right. So, so oh just to, you know, know, let you guys know, right, I'll um, be in there. Get my if, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, you know, want to get your teeth white and um, I do recommend that place to go to so you know yes. I mean I, I went there before and the results were amazing yeah your teeth are like gleamingly white I see oh. <laughs> <laughs> so those are some great tips for for teeth whitening thank you Courtney okay, cool. so yes. when we return we'll tell you about stories that we have flying under the radar so keep it locked my new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff I wouldn't use this one he helps me with my decision making never and he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411. So let's take a look at some of the stories that are flying under the radar. Yes. And outspoken teen actress Amanda Stenberg, famous for her breakout role in The Hunger Games as Rue, 
came out as bisexual on a Teen Vogue Snapchat. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 17-year-old said in a series of snaps, it's really, really hard thing to be silenced, and it's deeply bruising to fight against your identity and to mold yourself into shapes that you shouldn't be in. As someone who identifies as a black bisexual woman, I've been through it and it hurts. It's awkward and it's uncomfortable. But then I realized because of Solange and Ava DuVernay and Willow and all the black girls watching this right now that there's absolutely nothing to change. We cannot be suppressed. And you know what? I really like her because she's been outspoken on a lot of things. Remember last year with the Kylie Jenner and the cornrows? Yes. Oh, yes. And yes. now, you yes. know about yes. that. And mm -hmm. she, yes, she, she was like, you need to step behind us. <laughs> yeah. and, and what about what about these, all these black boys getting killed? You're going to wear cornrows. Yes. You need to step, yeah. You need yeah, to that speak was, up that was, that for was very the community. And mm -hmm. so she's really just being herself. I feel like she's not doing it for fame or right. know, to stand out. She's just like, this is who I am. More mm -hmm. authenticity, more representation for Everybody, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. all black women, all women in general, throughout the media, and I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think she's at really seventeen, great. right? Seventeen. At 17. Yes. I know that's crazy. That's the millennials. Yes. They don't give a good goddamn. <laughs> she's doing think. her thing. Right. She's it's doing true. her thing. I like it. I like okay. it a lot. Shout out to the millennials. Mm -hmm. yes. Shout out to El Chapo. <laughs> Wait a minute. You no, know, no, you can't shout him out. He Wait a minute. Back you in know, jail. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he, he keeps getting out, so he's like a gangster, gangster. They said that he like killed almost thirty. 34,000 people? Are you serious? He's responsible mm -hmm. for that many no. deaths? Yeah. 34,000? Yeah. 34? Like 3, 4? Wow. No. Yeah. Yeah. We could, we could, we could search it, but I, I mean, I did the research on it. Like, I mean, think about it. It's a mob style. He has a yeah. whole organization. I know. It's a yeah, huge drug cartel. So, well, yeah, it's a huge cartel. So anyway, he got knocked. Mm. <laughs> the guy got knocked this time. He's so, it's so crazy. So he met with Sean Penn. Which was so crazy. I'm like, Sean Penn, what are you doing? What are you so, doing? But one of the Come ladies on, from the novellas, I can't think of her name, right? Yeah, her name is Kate. It's, a, it's um, Kate Del Castillo. She's like, she hooked them up, and the, he was trying to get a, like a movie deal. Done. Yes, he was. Wow. But, yes. but Sean Penn thought that he was going to play Barbara Walters or Oprah. I don't know what Sean Penn <laughs> thought he, <laughs> he was doing was with Al Chapo. <laughs> oh, Barack Obama is probably like, are you fucking kidding me? These people are ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's so crazy. And I mean, you know what? If El Chapo had just laid low and tried not to... Why should he have to? He's he, getting back out of jail. Mexico <laughs> has not turned him over to the U.S. government. And now he's tell me why. the same jail. The same prison that he broke out of is the same prison he's back into. Wow. It's Which just is a travesty, actually. Like, that's kind of, like, ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. But yes. you know what makes me what, what makes me laugh is the fact that, okay... Actresses, Kate Del Castillo, mm -hmm. actor Sean They know him. They, they know how to get him. him. They know him. But the, you know, the police, law enforcement were looking for him for months and couldn't find him. But so Sean they were just, they were tracking him. him. They were tracking Del Castillo. That's how they, it led them to Penn and then Penn led, that to, led right. them to him. And that's how it happened. But yeah, he should have just laid low. He would have still been free. Sean Penn, I know you came after Lee Daniels. You probably better <laughs> watch your back now. Because now <laughs> Chapo, you're going to be on a chopping block. <laughs> My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411? And now, here's a little island flavor. <laughs> Wait, look at me, Leon. <laughs> All she needs is like a best of flavor basket on her head. Oh, no, no. Because I'm dark skinned, I bet. But go ahead, girl. Lord, have mercy. Fruit basket. Lord, I'm What you got in the pot, girl? I'm getting better. I'm getting better, right? Well, I go on. No. Well, I go on. Go on, girl. Do your thing. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Carnival season is quickly coming upon us. It's only two weeks, five days. Seven hours, fifty-two <laughs> seconds away. Which but carnival? Who's counting? Which carnival? Trinidad, Trinidad carnival. Oh, Trinidad, yes. like it's another one. <laughs> Sorry. Right. The only one, the main one, the oh, major oh, one. Okay. Yes, and masqueraders everywhere can't wait to jump and wave their way down the road and across the stage. But some are wondering where is the power soca they're supposed to be winding to? Because this year's power soca really hasn't been strong. So, Fan Lions, famous Trinidadian soca artist. Wait, wait. 
Power Soca. Power Soca. What, what's, what's Power, power Soca? Soca is a Soca that you will use to pump you up. That's the one you like, jump on wave, jump up on wave. Jump. Yeah. That's the one that gets you. Play the song from last year. Can't play the song from last year. No, 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 no. You gotta have a new one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Every pressure on your sound. No, literally every year. Go, Shorty. It's your birthday. That still pumps me up. That shit came out in '88. Okay, sorry. Good. Every year they come out with like a whole new set of Soca every year for the carnival. Oh. And it's just not. It's not very good. It's it's okay. Hey, there's a lot of songs, but they're not really like, yes, power. So, Fan Lines, famous Trinidadian soca artist, three-time winner of the Carnival Road March title. Not a lion, like, cookie. In no. <laughs> okay. No. And she called out those people who basically were saying that power soca is on its way out. So, oh, wow. elaborating on her comments in an interview with Loop TT, Lion said... My next point was that Iwa and Super Blue, her dad, are known for singing Power Soca. And you're telling them that's dead and don't bring no power. And you're telling younger artists, don't do power because we're not playing it. So you're already blocking people because you're telling them there is no market for it. Right. I turned to the crowd and said, fight for your artists, fight for your music and your culture. <laughs> After I said yeah. that, yeah, that anybody it. who <laughs> disagrees, you should not support the art form, could kiss my black Eight? Yes. Mm. My black booty. I love, I love fans. But they're in her pocket. They're in her pockets. I would be mad too. No, yeah. I'm, no I'm saying, yes, definitely. And so it's she's a cultural it, thing. It yeah. is. And mm -hmm. it's so silly. It would be like us saying, okay, hip hop, but we don't want no trap music. Trap right. music's on its way out. Are you kidding me? Like, well, hip hop part, and trap music don't go hand in hand. Well, it doesn't, but it falls under the umbrella, though. It's like it hip hop does. and no Jay Z. Exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, trap music is like really new and really raunchy. Sure. And it is, probably is going to go out. But the point is for them to say, you know what, don't make it. Right. You know what I mean? There are people out right. there who want to make it. Expression. And so it's like, why not make it? It's mm -hmm. all part of the same umbrella. And, and it's a cultural thing as well, yeah. which is really, more, which is really, really important. That's the thing. Yeah. The culture. Right. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Welcome back to What's the 4 and 1. It is reality TV recap time. Take it away, Onika. No, no, no. It's going to be her. Go ahead. Go oh, I'm taking oh, it. I'm going to just chime in. Okay. Okay. Well, there's, a lot, there's lots of baby news going on in the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Stars Candy Burris and Todd Tucker recently welcomed a baby boy oh, into the world so nice. and named him Ace Wells Tucker. Nice. Okay. Bye. So she um, she made the announcement on January 7th after she gave birth the day before. Candy and Todd were going back and forth about the name, but they finally decided on a name that they both like, and they wanted something that was unique. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like a celeb thing. You know, everyone's thinking out the box with these baby names. But Ace is probably the most normal name I've heard in a while. Yeah. Besides, like, Northwest and Saint. West and Blue, Ivy, and well, like, they have nicknames. They, I think of yeah. Kim and Kanye, they call uh, the daughter Nori, which is cute. So they'll mm. probably think of a nickname for Saint, and I'm sure Blue Ivy. I mean, I think that's a very adorable name. So they probably, oh, you know, Blue, they probably have a nickname a color, for though? her. I don't know, colors. Well, they have like... Jay Z Blue, he has his Pantone color. So Blue apparently is something that, you know, he very takes very serious. And Blue can trail. That's remember, he's ah! a daughter, huh? But was that her <laughs> real name, though? Or is he that just her stage? Like you named Blue. Mm. Interesting. So Phaedra showed up at the hospital, right? Yes, yes. And all these uh, Bravo celebrities, Bravo mm -hmm. celebrities came to the hospital to see uh, baby Ace. Aww. And what do you guys think about that? You know, because Todd and Phaedra were beefing about some money that Phaedra was supposed to owe, had owed him and all yes. that stuff. So what do you, what do you think? Well, huh? I think, well, she eventually, she she wrote uh, his check, so he mm -hmm. did get paid. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's great that um, she went to um, support um Candy and Todd because, you know, um, the, in the storyline, you know, Candy and Phaedra were going through changes because, yeah. you know, she was upset about um, Apollo stuff being at her house and, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. So uh -huh. it was, I believe it was like, you know, not only was she interested in seeing the baby and like, you know, showing her support, it was kind of like a peace, peace yeah, and yeah, peace and burying the hatchet yeah. and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, I'm glad because they're both amazing businesswomen and, you know, I do like Phaedra. I think she's hilarious and I love, love, love Candy. So, yeah, you know, I'm glad I do. I love Candy's Candy. Like so I'm my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they um, buried the hatchet and moved forward. Okay. Yeah. That's a good thing. you like, okay, what did you think? Because you was looking like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, I mean, they're all nice. It's not for good TV. <gasps> I mean, you want to uh, watch them acting crazy. Well, but oh, baby. Baby. Be the baby. No, no, no. No, but like, there, was, there was shade, like, you know, two episodes before mm, the baby. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. they were, um, Ken, Kenya and Phaedra were talking about 
Candy and Todd, and then mm. and then um, Candy's assistant came out and like served them up something proper. Right, and right. I was like, mm, but you wanted to keep, you wanted to keep seeing that. Okay? Yeah, bit. I mean, it's television. It I is. Mean, I mean, but it, but the drama will come back. Exactly. Oh, it's just a reprieve, and it'll come right yeah, back. Because Candy's know. definitely going to serve some drama, and then Sheree and the newcomer um, with the blonde braids. I forget her name. Um, but she's she's not officially in Housewife, but she has been Kim on Fields? the show. No. Not Kim Fields. We love Kim Fields. Um, the friend. Familiar. I'm not sure of her name, but um, Sheree accused her of sleeping with um, oh, her I husband. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Or her ex-husband. I know, I saw it. When they went away. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, yes. Okay. So it was, it was a pretty good show. It was a pretty mm-hmm. good episode. So I'm sure that that's all going to resurface and come out and words are going to be exchanged. And, mm-hmm. you know, we just got to stay tuned. Yeah, so definitely stay tuned. <laughs> My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back. Now we're bringing you stories that are in the pipeline. And the Schomburg Center will premiere the documentary Black and Cuba on January 26th. Tickets are available on eventbrite.com. And okay. Pepsi has confirmed to the Associated Press that Beyonce will p- perform at Super Bowl halftime show oh, at Levi nice. Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Last month, Coldplay announced it would perform at the halftime show. Beyonce and Coldplay collaborated on the band's new album, A Head Full of Dreams, so that should be really interesting. Nice. And you know that she's a gal pal with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, who is the... Um, Coldplay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, his, that's ex, ex-wife. Ex, yeah. yeah. So that should be interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I found some place to go watch the Super Bowl because of Beyonce. I know. Go. It's a party this is the, this is the no, first no, time I've been in the streets. <laughs> you have to be in the streets. <laughs> Super Bowl, girl. No, <laughs> listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. R&B legend Mavis Staples will release a new album on February 19th entitled Living on a High Note. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Upcoming <laughs> Stella <laughs> Awards. Featuring the best in gospel music. Oh, I love gospel music. It's going to yes. happen on February 19th in Vegas. Want to go? No. No, I don't want to turn up with the gospel people. I'm sorry. No, you can't turn up in Vegas with the gospel people. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. Me and Marvin Sapp. Go make it clap. No, I'm just bring, joking, Lord. You're going to bring an island flavor there, too? <laughs> we'll bring some uh, Me and Marvin Sapp. Go make it clap. Soca. I think that's hilarious. Okay. Mm. Alrighty then. <laughs> well, you've heard of patty pie, so now get ready for patty cakes. Which That's I so think cute. that name is so patty adorable. Cake, patty cake. So cute. Yeah. Patty cakes. Patty, LaBe- patty LaBelle will again partner with Walmart for three new additions to her dessert line. In addition to the sweet potato pie, Walmart will add vanilla pound cake and caramel cake. She needs she needs James Wright yeah. to sing it up on her team. <laughs> yeah. Caramel cake. Damn, that's good. Mm. Oh, with some vanilla ice cream? Oh, and you just put it, like, in the microwave for, like, 30 seconds? <laughs> you know what? Like yes. Well, that will do it while y'all <laughs> having this moment. Okay, that will do sorry, it for this week's well. edition of What's the 4 and 1, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. <laughs> Until next week, be sure to check out our website, what's the 4 and <laughs> And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, Blab, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 and 1 TV. What she said. And check <laughs> us out, we rem- and we might just mention you on the show. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean and Courtney Rashawn, thank you for watching What's the 4 and 1. We'll see you next week. 411, who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. What's the 411?